Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there, thinking about you, the most beautiful subscribers in half of the known universe. Eventually we move to parallel worlds and alternate dimensions and such. So don't worry, we have plenty of space to take over with our excellence and incredibleness. And if you're new here, you see what happens when you are subscribed to this channel. We welcome. No, hey, pull up seat in, get in. We're gonna get into some uh, topics today. Today is not a nutty bag today. It's just more of a, a for future kind of thinking and um, how to plan. A lot of it's been a, a force fed down our throats recently, but what does it mean and kind of an understanding of the, some of the underlying ecosystems that's going to be in it probably we'll kind of get into a little bit today. Ethereum is burning. Look, it's, it's been exponential. Remember, we were sitting there for the longest, getting close to what was going to be, you know, paper for a, a billion dollars. But now we're at, you know, 40 billion in county um, passed over a million Ethereum. So. Mark is bouncing back a little bit. Bitcoin is a little bit down presently. I don't know if this is how recent this is fairly recent. Uh, Shiba had a pretty good day today. It was up much, a little bit higher than this earlier. Not much, I was going to say much, but a little bit higher than this. But the market is starting to show some signs and a lot of the technical analysis, when you look at it in the on-chain data, it doesn't show any signs of a slowdown. So, you know, why didn't we see a lot of people thought through November we were going to see a bit of a um, hard run because you tend to see a pullback when people start to take taxes, um, money for taxes out near the uh, mid in December. But this may be more of a prolonged cycle. And I think that's the case with, you know, none of this is financial advice or medical advice or anything that I say. Um, financial or planning anything in any shape form or fashion this is just for you to listen entertain laugh sometimes i show some stuff that i'm doing but hey everybody's on their own do not uh, you know say do your own research but at this time so people don't need to do their own research you need to kind of just listen to people who know what they're talking about but that's a whole other topic um so mark is gonna seems like it's just going along then it'll there'll be burst and it'll be a giant burst at some point and by burst it's when bitcoin go start going through the roof for anyone who doesn't understand that the bitcoin i may talk about a lot of other things here decentralized finance nfts the smart chain smart contacts but everything rides on the back of the big boy and so still by bitcoin ethereum i would also say cardano is for sale now, you know, and then we can bleed off into other things. And I'm going to do a short video at some point in time about my whole kind of plan of how in any market, you know, kind of how to preserve gains that you make on when you have some assets that appreciate and, and you know, it's way easier in crypto, cryptocurrencies and then how to, um, you know, kind of build and make money and save that money. So when times go bad, you're not so um, hurt by those bad times as well. And in cryptocurrencies, that's going to be taking a lot of the stable coins like Tether, USD, and putting them in liquidity pools and leveraging them against each other to um, yield farm. But that way also kind of just doing it with stable coins that don't have their prices doesn't change that much. But the how much you can borrow and how much you can loan prices change a lot <laughs> so stock market you know still another two percent loss has been tanking weird thing though is that like tesla doing well uh mark apple only you know tesla and apple are, you know positive <laughs> on the news that i know tesla i saw somewhere they a lot of different things they're working on um, their plans for a car at some point. I, I'm not sure that saying this is what caused this spike today for Apple. I, I haven't heard anything in particular. So we're getting near the holiday season. I'm sure the numbers are going to look pretty good going into it. And Elon actually came out with a email over the weekend, allegedly was uh, dropped, but that was about SpaceX saying that, you know, there's been some problems in the production of the um, Raptor engine. So for the Starship. So so we'll, we'll, things we'll keep eye on. Now, this is advice. Um, 
if there's someone in your life that is special and means to you success and how you got to the point that where you're at, maybe write something nice about them kind in the comment section and forward them this video and say, take a look at what I wrote about you on the internet for all of time to, to witness. With that, Beam Therapeutics win FDA nod to start sickle cell disease trial for gene editing candidates. Beam Therapeutics announced the FDA cleared its investigational new, investigational new drug application as a treatment for sickle cell disease. And so, you know, we talked about it. This is one thing for the future that we're going to start here about a lot of advances. There's some other ones in a day or so talking about robots now are um, recreating and they were able to help have artificial intelligence help design a more efficient form for the prodigy prodigy no that's not prodigy no prodigy Pro, prodigy prodigy the babies to live and survive on that's why they I'm using big giant words anyway for prodigy is not a big giant word but anyway that their babies, because their babies were dying really at, quick after birth, but then they um, changed the form, and I believe that the babies, or, or either the parents were dying after giving birth. But it's going to be, it's just, that's a crazy uh, article we'll get in a couple of days. Anyway, Beam Therapeutics, this is now more closer to, it's going to be affecting us in the next, closer to reality, the three to five year time span versus uh, the artificial, the when I say artificial life we're creating, literally, they took, they scraped off the scale. I'll get to that story in a couple of days. But that's crazy. But now, this is more closer. Beam Therapeutics is going to start. Um, and, and gene editing is the dream of being able to cure a lot of these diseases. Because a, a lot of diseases, when you study them um, um, in, in, <clears throat> in medicine, is literally one protein or you know one uh, base pair that's just off kilter and if that could be fixed there's so many things that could, um, that can improve individuals lives which is awesome kind of a way into a different direction um, privacy browser brave expands beyond ethereum to solana so you know Ethereum was the big boy in terms of Brave. Brave is a, a it, I, I highly recommend, I use it um, as one of my browsers. Brave, it, you know, blocks a lot of things. You can see here, always tell me how many ads it blocked and the minutes and time is saved for me and some money it estimated that I earned this month, all of those things. So it's a good, it's a, I, I like the browser, but they're also looking, Brave is turning to Solana due to the crypto network's high speeds and low costs, according to the company's blog post. Unlike other smart contract enabled blockchains, such as Ethereum, simple transactions on Solana cost as little as um, 0.001 cent per data from Solana Beach. So low fees could potentially make interacting with crypto, specifically Edge's projected next billion crypto users far more attractive. And they also think that they're going to integrate in, well, not also think, they're, they're also going to integrate in Solana's decentralized application, its dApps into the Brave browser, which you can, you know, do for Ethereum now as well. Now, you can get a um, Phantom Wallet on, well, can you get Phantom Wallet on Brave now? I haven't tried. I know on, on Chrome you can. So I'm going to try Phantom Wallet, which is the Brave Wallet. I'm sorry, the um, wallet, one of the wallets that work well with the Solana network. Because, you know, Brave is basically, like I said, Brave is built free and open source Chrome. So do one on another, probably should. But yeah, Brave is um, a nice browser. And now Solana is going to be integrating with them. So you see how all of these, these technologies start to connect and combine and, 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 and grow with each other. So that's really where you're going to see the, the, the huge exponential growth. And remember, it's hard for humans to, to really visualize and understand exponential growth. We good at linear growth, you know, but when that, when it starts to step up where you just can't even, next thing you know, you look and see a mountain in front of you that, you know, it boggles our mind. And that's not a bad thing at times. So, 
this one we're going to talk, and I'll probably even make the thumbnail something about Web 3.0 because there's two stories about it. How Microsoft will move to the Web 3.0 blockchain division to expand. I was looking at that earlier, like, you know, I haven't really paid attention. You know, uh, Microsoft, none of this is financial advice. It's one of those stocks where you buy and you, you just set it and forget it. You know, they pay dividends, them divvies, divvies, divvy divvies. They pay dividends, so you just buy it. <clears throat> you could almost like Microsoft. I think it's the largest company in the world right now um, by market cap, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, it's like some companies are like Tesla. You you want to see growth. You, you throw money in there thinking that, OK, I'm parking money in here, but this could shoot up at any time. So I'm just going to throw money at Tesla. Microsoft is like, you know what? Kind of like I was saying earlier, we're going to do all the crazy stuff with the stable coins and leverage yield and that. That's almost like you just put money in Microsoft. If you got money in stock market, it's going to go up and it's going to split and it's going to continue to go up. <laughs> you know what? As long as there's going to be functioning computer systems and networks in this world, we'll have Microsoft around as well. Now, could it go the way of an, an Intel or other companies who... Um, had lion shares that the market fell off 100%, but they usually they got some pretty good leadership there now for uh, in the past several decades. So, Microsoft, you can set and forget, not you know, like none of financial advice, of course. But anyway, tech giant Microsoft will expand its blockchain team, according to the to this department director of strategy, transformation, blockchain, and cloud hardware supply chain, York Rhodes, via his Twitter accounts. Your <laughs> Yoid, um, York Rhodes called for on potential candidates and everyone obsessed with Turing complete scale. I'm sorry, scarce programmable objects. Turing complete scarce programmable objects. If you're obsessed with that, contact him. So they're developing. So he says, you know, developing a software team. He's been down a rabbit hole and he's going to get even more bullish and they're getting deep into Web 3.0. Like I said, Microsoft. You know, just the same way Facebook switched their name to Meta and over time, everyone will just start calling them Meta. I don't know. No, no, no. Google still is called Google, but not the alphabet. When I'm talking about alphabet, I do guess I call it alphabet. So anyway, they are getting deep in it. The tech giant has already developed major products on top of a blockchain decentralized identity solution. Ion was successfully launched on the Bitcoin network as a second layer application completed over four years of development. Its purpose to give individuals control over their digital exchanges by leveraging decentralized identifiers, DIDs. So and that's going to be a big thing, decentralized identification so that a lot of the protocols can be bypassed or, or you know, more safely navigated in the system. So people will have these decentralized IDs. And we'll talk about some of the cryptocurrencies that are working on that and the, uh, I don't know, I don't. I hate stuff like brick and mortar and all that type of stuff, but other, you know, companies that are working on them as well. Corp companies outside of the cyberverse. I don't know, I guess I'm meta took over cyber, but hey, I guess meta's better than cyber. You'd imagine that would have been a name from the 80s and stuff. The metaverse, large scale AI models and other innovations were part of Nadelia's presentation. I think he's a CEO. That, I don't think he's a CEO of, of um, Microsoft. The technology that powers cryptocurrency blockchain seems poised to play a big role in the company's strategy to take over this new digital sector. So we will keep an eye on that. So what is Web 3.0? What is this all this stuff that everybody keep talking about? What is Web 1.0? What is Web 2.0? Web 1.0 was basically what you imagine. The first kind of static web page is where you just look at it. You couldn't interact with it. Um, it just kind of, that was the information. Then it became a little bit of message boards where people were able to kind of do threads going back and forth. Then the next step of 2.0 became more interactive. Websites, you know, had flash initially then became html where you can things can move around interact you can touch click we can order stuff a lot of those things start to to, to really become ease of use streaming um the remember we talked about these um technologies that join together so now you have the wireless and the dig and the data that's able to now stream data 
video and sound much easier, fast. You know, in a moment's notice, people now are frustrated if it's less than a, less than a tenth of a second for their things. And it all worked for that. Now, the next generation with five and six generation, everybody was going nutty for five. What do you think is what happened with six generation of wireless technology and data using this uh, millimeter uh, <clears throat> approach where you are now able to give way more um, data packets and, and information. So now we're about to be able to have the wireless I'm sorry, the autonomous cars, the cars that drive themselves, the, the vehicles that go through the sky that that can navigate themselves. Everything's using batteries being charged on renewable systems um, as much employing renewable systems and the Internet. How is all this stuff going to communicate in a seamless fashion, moving at the speed that we're accustomed to and quite honestly going to ramp up? To where, the, you know, we uh, the other day I talked about the 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 very intelligent people who are looking at ways to increase the way our brains can compute information because that's the only way we'll be able to keep up with the technology that we're building, either wirelessly or wired. I'm gonna go with the wireless approach now that you know this seems like a a very high uh, viable high option on the list. So the, the, the web 3.0 is what's going to operate in that world. What's going to operate in that? It's going to have to be blockchain. It's got to be cryptocurrency. It's going to have to be something that's, that's super secure and verifiable, you know, that's running those layers, running these programs and simulations. You can't have autonomous vehicles that can be hacked. You cannot have autonomous well, vehicles cover everything. I'll have to go on more into that, even boats that they're going to be making with that. And submarines and, and and what we would call spaceships, but flying vehicles that can transmedium vehicles is what we'll we'll go with the term for. So that is what Web three point is. Web three point is go. How are you going to interact with that world? So what is that going to look like? You know, in the hard physical. You know, here look, look what we're talking about here. <clears throat> If you've been perusing cryptocurrency forums or video game news recently or spying everything from New York Times, job listeners, Zandy Twitter threads, question that traditional job interviews about to be replaced by blockchain based quests, adventures and courses to prove your worth. In other words, they're making it describe like you will have glasses on and you'd be walking around. And next thing you know, you'd be like a big flaming uh, sword to come to the ground or a big giant. Um, book may sit there and be like you know can you crack the code to open it and as you go through these virtual codes which are you know in, in this virtual world your, your hands is, is tracking everything you're able to move things open it and then at the end you 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 know solve all these puzzles and say hey this is a job for uh such and such do you accept you know they want to test you first to see if you were capable of it and and you know this is the world we live in you're gonna see people you know if you see the movie uh free guy recently it's kind of like if you got the glasses from um one of the players in the real world how the world look where everything has um signs over it and and you know uh digital facades buildings have you know the skylines look different with digitally uh, digital builds dragons flying through the air you know that's what people are talking about with the metaverse and was running all of that was was making everything run seamlessly and knowing that you pay for this and that this experience is supposed to happen then is this not to interfere with this this way you, you know think you know you can be driving because everything's gonna be autonomous most of the things will be autonomous you have to have special permission special Mark my words, people be mad about this. And they go fight tooth and nail, but you know, and they got to argue, try to argue with the science because the science go say, hey, the autonomous vehicles and all of this, you know, just like with flu, we got rid of, of, of accidents with this. What are we supposed to do? Go back to accidents? We got rid of flu with our practices last year, but we're going back to flu because that's what we like. We like flu. We like car accidents because that's what, you know, what makes sense to us, I guess. <laughs> the sarcasm. I don't know the answer right one on that. That's a whole different other story. I'm just saying what the things that will be approaching us in the near future that will give us these um, options, what happens. So that's what Web 3.0 is going to be. Web 3.0 is going to be the take what, what, you know, so, you know, first one we used to just watch, then we kind of interacted. Now it's going to interact with us. <laughs> That's uh, that's that's your life now. Oh my gosh, it's going to be intrusive. I'm just not really really understanding how that's going to be. 
it's going to be more intrusive than we have any imagination of. So, yeah, it's going to interact with us. Oh, I like that. It's deep. So, I'm not going to keep you long. With that said, I think there's anything else super important to say in here. Get ready. I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.